Lexi had some. She wanted more. I mean, it was just crazy. Yeah, that's how she is. Didn't she say she wants to take you there now? Mm hmm She says she wants to take me there now, and uh, I think she just feels bad that she associates with you, and she's like, I guess I better do something for Amber. <laughs> Well, you know, you used to be the favorite child. And all I was sudden, never the favorite child. Well, all of a sudden, because I moved next to her not too far away, a few minutes, she's like, what can I do for you, Lindsay? I'm like, I'll, I'll, you can do everything for me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, no, neither one of us are the favorite child. It's Lexi. It's all about Lexi. I know, the dog. Yeah. That, that she used one. to be mine, and then she won't let go over now. I like, oh my gosh. So, you know how many times I spent the night? It's four in the morning, and mom's like, it's time to get up. We gotta change the sheets for Lexi again. I'm like, we gotta change the sheets. You do this all the time. And she says, Lexi just has potty problems. I'm like, I've gotta go to sleep. Well, first of all, she is my dog, or she used to be my dog. Mom took over. But uh, she uh, she does have a small bladder. She's a smaller dog. And, you know, she, I don't know how many times she has to have accidents. But uh, it's not like it was close. So I just go in. I said, hey, I forgot to get something from your house. And she's like, oh, okay. So she's all fine. Well, I go back to my place. I'm in the car after five minutes. And then I get a call. It's from mom. And then she says, Amber, Lindsay just came in, bust in the door, and demanded to get something she forgot. So I'm sorry I hung up on you. She just came in the door without even knocking or whatever. And I'm like, uh-huh. And then she says, can you believe that, Amber? And I'm like, this is actually Lindsay. <laughs> um, and she's like, oh, so what did you call about, Lindsay? I'm like, no, you called me. She's like, oh. I'm like, wait a second. So this is how you talk about me? Oh, my God. He's like, no, I was just trying to get something out of Amber. She's She's been in a bad mood or something. And so I was just trying to, you know, calm her down <laughs> and I'm like what are we talking about I'm like I'll let you go mom she's like okay I'll let you go oh she's gosh. like I gotta call Amber now <laughs> I know if, if she's not letting you go then normally the conversation goes you're breaking up you're breaking up you're we're breaking up <laughs> or somebody's at the door Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about a topic that I'm really not all that comfortable talking about to be frankly honest. Uh, that would be confidence. Um, you know, confidence really just takes some time for a lot of people. I really don't believe anybody's born fully confident. And actually, I, I personally believe the more intelligent you are and the more aware uh, you are of the things you don't know versus someone who is very very good at believing they're good at everything um and i would say it'd be the reverse order that they probably just aren't aware of the things they don't know however being confident is something i think that is attainable but you would need achievements to get there uh, i'm not saying you would have to go win a race or be valedictorian uh, those things are great but they're not going to always do it because when people give their speeches that, that lasts for about four seconds and then they realize what's next 
uh, what what's next on the list and it's a vicious cycle of trying to obtain success and happiness through achievements in a way that it just never ends so I wouldn't go that route either but what I do mean by achievements are just small things just very very small things um, sometimes I think sometimes when people think of very hard problems, things that are challenging, uh, they're so focused on the big picture of it, it's hard for them to zoom in to the areas in the problem that would give them the most trouble. In cases like that, I would probably say it's best to go ahead and focus on the problem in smaller parts. I would break down those parts tackle each one of those and each, each of the parts in a way where you can knock that part out. Pretend those other parts that are also part of the problem, pretend they don't exist. They don't exist in the, the equation or whatever. So um, yeah, it, definitely it's important to just break things down. Don't focus on the whole. Um, and that I think that right there will give you a lot of confidence because you're taking smaller parts and each of those smaller parts are achievements and you know that's helpful for a lot of people and that could be anything in life it doesn't have to be academics or or what have you it could be anything so that's my take on confidence when it comes to that kind of stuff but I know um, I know when it comes to the pandemic it's very easy for a lot of us to retreat in our minds and think okay uh, what happened during this part of my life and how is this a barrier at the moment and how will I overcome that and I honestly think the best way to under over I think the best way to overcome problems like that and things in your head you're trying to sort out is just do something completely different that you've never done before and you know for me it's creativity um, I work, I feel like my mind works differently than a lot of people. And when I walk in a room, I don't see the problems. I just said, I see opportunities. I said, well, that's not exactly how I would like things to be, but uh, it's very interesting. I could turn this into that, or this could be different. Um, but never do I walk into a room and say, well, that doesn't look right. And that's wrong. You don't, you shouldn't go into situations thinking those kind of things. I think you should actually just, you know, very plainly open your mind and uh, see possibility where others can't because I always have felt it's the people who can see the invisible parts of a problem or the invisible opportunities and if you can hone in onto the things they can't see then I think you have a little bit of advantage right there. Okay, so I'm back. So here are some ideas for those of you who may be bored at the moment. I would take an interest in things that challenge your mind, um, almost like a, in a lateral level. Uh, you know, that could be creating videos like I do. There's a lot of elements to creating videos that really aren't captured and the essence of what really goes into it, 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 it can't be articulated. All right, guys. Well, I think I've been boring you guys quite a bit. Uh, I could just ramble forever and ever and ever and just wonder if anybody even watches it to begin with. But I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Bye. And I'm like, uh huh. And then she says, Can you believe that, Amber? And I'm like, this is actually Lindsay. <laughs> um, and she's like, oh, so what did you call that, Lindsay? I'm like, no, you called me. <laughs> she's like, oh. I'm like, wait a second. So this is how you talk about me? <laughs> oh, God. He's like, no, I was just trying to get something out of Amber. She's She's been in a bad mood or something. <laughs> and so I was just trying to, you know, calm her down. <laughs> And I'm like, what are we talking about? I'm like, I'll let you go, Mom. She's like, okay, I'll let you go. Oh, She's gosh. like, I gotta call Amber now. <laughs>